Welcome to Holidays in My House on Today All Day. Every morning, we have the honor of joining you and your family as you start your day. But for the next hour, we are going to take you into our homes, giving you a glimpse of what makes the holidays so special for our Today Show family. Up first, the always inspiring Hoda Kotb on her holiday traditions with her girls. I feel like the holidays are a time where everyone's together. And sometimes, just because everyone's busy lives, you have to say, stop, okay? Everybody come together. And that's what the holidays mean to me. It means family, it means food, it means like just sharing. Because I feel like sometimes we sprint past life. You go so fast that you kind of miss it. You're like, wait, what happened there? What happened there? This is a time for everyone to hit pause, everyone to gather, everyone to be together, and everyone just to sort of, you know, just, just marvel at how lucky we are to have like these incredible people in our lives. Because I have two little girls, one is five and one is three, I really look forward to Christmas Eve because that's when the anticipation is like fever pitch. Santa's coming, Santa's coming. Like, where's he gonna be? How's he gonna get in? Like all of that beautiful wonder is happening. So Christmas Eve is when my heart pounds. Like a year or two ago, they were just sort of, they didn't really know what was going on with the holidays. I don't think they quite grasped it. But now, I mean, when they hear bells, they go, is that Santa? Like, I don't think there's anything better, sorry, than when your kids are looking out the window looking for Santa. <gasps> Could that, was that him? Was that a shooting star? Was that Santa? I saw a red dot. Was that Rudolph? You know, it's like all those cool, magical things, and they remind you of just the wonder of being a kid. And just like, you gotta believe in miracles. Like that's it. You gotta believe in miracles. And I think it, this holiday season reminds us of that. The best gift that I've received over the holidays, I think anything from my kids, like I have and I love you mom, can't wait for Christmas, already up right now because they, they drew me a, a note or a card. And in fact, I've got so many of their notes and cards that I've collected over the holidays that I don't like have room for them. So I think it's just that. It's like, it, you, you know what, it used to be about, oh my God, I've got a cool something, a purse or whatever. And I don't even care about any of that stuff anymore. I don't know that I ever really did, but now I sort of, I, like, I feel like my life is snapped into focus. Like I finally get it, okay? And the best things are things that your kids have made with their own two hands and handed to you. It's like, it's like they're giving you their heart kind of on a piece of paper. There's no better place for the holidays than New York, none. We go to the Radio City Rockettes, of course. The Rockefeller Center Christmas tree, which happens to be right outside the window where I'm sitting as we speak. The Saks windows are incredible. There's something about this city during Christmas. It's teeming with people. People wait their whole lives to come to New York City for Christmas time. You see them in horse and buggies going around Central Park. You see them walking down Broadway. It's, I think it's electric, and if there's one place to be during Christmas, at least once in your life, it should be New York City. Merry Christmas, Hope. We're coming to get you. Merry Christmas, Hope. We're coming to get you. My parents let us open one present on Christmas Eve, and it was hard to pick. Man, you know, when you look at the presents, you're like, oh my God, we get one, which one, which one? Um, there's something about that little surprise that happens the night before. Um, and I try to do that with my girls, one present on Christmas Eve. But I also love the waking up at 4 a.m. tradition, the sitting around the tree. We used to wait for our parents to get up. We're like, why aren't they up? They're like, first we get coffee. I'm like, no, we can't wait. But I try to give the little gift on Christmas Eve and then have the big celebration Christmas Day. What I write in my journal every day is, dear God, thank you for this day this day that will never be repeated this way again. It reminds you that like every single day is a once in a lifetime. That's kind of it. And I feel like, like we have one ride around the sun. Like that's all you get. You don't get another one. Like this is it. So when I, when I think about my family, our, 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 our time together, it's like remembering like we get to be here. Like we get to be together on this day. Instead of seeing it as like, oh God, there that one goes again, there that one goes again, which is what we all do. I mean, no, no joke. 
but to kind of ground yourself for a second. Take a deep breath and look around and think to yourself like, wow, we're all here in one place at one time. And there are a lot of families who don't get that. So I think it's just sort of savor and linger, like go slow, take your time, enjoy, you know, enjoy everybody being together for this period. So sweet, thank you, Hoda. And now we hop on over to the Melvin household where Craig and Lindsay took some time a couple years back to show us how they're keeping a holiday cookie tradition alive with a little extra help from the kiddos. Take a look. Oh, that's good. You know what? I'm gonna keep it to keep it to myself. I'm just gonna have it. No! And you can help me do this. You know, for me, um, I mean the holiday season is always extra special. It's always since I was a little boy, you know, like just being around family and obviously the opening of presents and but then you get older and it's like, eh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, eh. But then you have kids. And you get to experience the holidays through their eyes, and it's like all of a sudden you're a kid again. You know, sugar is just not a word, right? Why'd you use toilet paper to wash you? Mommy gave me it. No, I did not give you this toilet paper. Mommy's ruined Christmas. Yeah, there are a couple holiday traditions that we, we have continued. Uh, growing up, my mom was big on, on baking holiday cookies. Um, we've continued that tradition with moderate success. Okay, this is actually a no-bake recipe. So I like it because it's fun, it's kind of messy, and it takes up some time. So the first thing we do is we take three tablespoons of our butter, drop it in here, four cups of marshmallows. Those four cups? Because she, she ate a half cup. She did, she, she eats more than she cooks with. Honey, so, never a dull moment, never a dull moment. You All right, so. Crush it. Yeah. Okay, two minutes. <laughs> We let that cook, and while that's... the football off the counter, please? Son, take the football, please. After we do that, then we make our mixture that's gonna make these green for the wreath. Okay, so now we take one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, so where is that honey? It's okay honey, if it drips out. Can you, you, you give me the stir? Yes, you can mix it all together. Mix it all together. Mix it all together there, together that's too. fine. We love a backseat cook in this house, all right. But it's, it's about the journey, right? Not the destination. The cookies don't have to be completely edible. It's all about the making of said cookies. I needed red mini M&Ms and we only you found these. Scared. So I had my kids sort and they loved it. And they put oh, all the red. educational. Yeah, and it took up about 20 minutes. My mom uh, was a fairly serious <gasps> baker for a while. Oh, I forgot what it looked like when this happened. So we did some some pretty intense cookie baking. Watch your face. As, uh, as we went no, into, it'll burn your finger off. Christmas. So it's it's like reliving reliving my youth. Me or Sydney? Yeah, either. Help me. You want to kind of help you? Now in a Is second. Just cornflakes and marshmallows. Yeah, and in a second we're gonna ask you to to drop that green old sauce in here. Oh, buddy. Oh, oh buddy. Here comes that green. Oh, yeah. Are we ready to get messy? Yeah. Yeah. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I'm not ready to get messy uh, I don't. I don't remember I my childhood it. tradition being like this. Mommy, is it I okay if I don't do it because I don't, I don't When I was um, a kid, it was Yes, you'll direct us. Is it okay if I don't do that? So it it. No, you can do this. This certainly helps don't. with the finished oh, product mommy, look. Mommy, mommy, you put them here like, ooh, it's, it's a decorative wreath. Good. What? But you shape them Good. so well. They're so pretty. You shape them so well. I'm a baby. So we, we do that. Um, Twas the night before Christmas. Uh, we read that every year. What are some other good traditions? You know, Lindsay's family had a, a tradition when we started dating um, that, that I sort of inherited where they would actually sing happy birthday. To, uh, to baby Jesus. And I, I remember when we were dating, she mentioned this and I thought she was joking and I just sort of dismissed it. And then all of a sudden I show up at her grandparents' house for Christmas Eve dinner. And after the, the meal was done, um, dessert was over, all of a sudden they bring out this little cake. We actually now sing it as well. We sing happy birthday to baby Jesus. 
In fact, I would contend if you're not singing happy birthday to Jesus and you're celebrating Christmas, maybe you're doing it wrong. Maybe we're not the weird ones. Maybe, maybe we are. We are about to introduce you to one of our family traditions, a tradition uh, that we actually inherited from your family. <laughs> we did. This is Oplotki. These are Christmas wafers. It's a Polish tradition in my family, and they look like this pink and white, and you pass the wafer tray around. Everybody takes a wafer. Sibby, I'm going to give you yours, just so... Yeah. Okay, you Get take the, the pink, pink one. Everybody takes a dollop of honey and puts it on their plate. So you scoop it just like this, put it on your plate. And I remember as a kid, the more honey, the better, right? The goal, the goal is to break the wafers with each other. And when you're doing that, you're basically giving a blessing to that family family member that you love. And it means wealth and happiness right and now. luck in the new Thank year. You. Not yet, not yet, not yet. We're, 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 we're break. It's quite the reminder this year that we should all be extraordinarily grateful, not just for, you know, our health, um, but but grateful for all of it that we took for granted. Thank you, Melvins. What a delicious tradition. And the treats don't stop there. Coming up, we keep the festivities rolling with a visit to the dailies for some more yummy sweets. Stay with us. Welcome back. The dailies are getting the party started with some delicious holiday treats. Carson and Siri took us behind the scenes of their favorite festive dessert and the infamous daily cocktail. Take a look. Hello, today all day, it's Carson Daly here with my wife, Siri. We would like to take a second to welcome you all to our home. And what a great time to have you in our house because it's the holiday season. And we thought inspired by that, we would create, well not create, but we would recreate two very, very important holiday traditions that um, both of us think about, our mothers in particular, but certainly our families going back to holidays of past. So we're gonna share those with you guys today. Mine's super easy, shocker, it has to do with alcohol. <laughs> so we'll get to my uh, Christmas cocktail here in a minute. Um, but first, Siri's gonna start with something that uh, is easy for you guys to make at home. Why don't you tell us the history okay, of Okay, I am starting with a dark chocolate mint brownie that has a chocolate glaze. And this is something that I made with my mom over the holidays growing up um, all the time. When I wrote a cookbook a couple years ago, I knew I wanted to include the recipe. And I asked my mom, um, how did we make well, it? Yeah, you know, I've got to plug that. Um, how do we make it, mom? And she honestly couldn't remember. She's like, I don't know where that recipe is. So I had to improvise and kind of come up with my own version. Um, but I think I did a pretty good job. So we are going to start. Um, I'm going to man a second camera. Yes. I have melted um, some bittersweet chocolate with um, a stick and a half of unsalted butter. So we did that over the stove, stirring um, consistently. It's really important to do that so you don't burn the butter. So to this, I'm going and burn the chocolate. To this, I'm going to add two different types of sugar, granulated, and they're a half cup of each, and um, light brown sugar. And then... Why not dark sugar? Well, you can. But um, it's just is like more molassesy, dark, dark brown sugar. Um, three eggs, and then a tablespoon of vanilla. And we're gonna just stir that up until it gets nice and smooth. And then to this, we are going to add our dry ingredients. So over here, I have a cup of flour half cup of cocoa powder and a fourth teaspoon of salt. So I'll kind of whisk that together first before I add it to my chocolate. And it's very important at this point that you do not over mix because if you do that, you're gonna have really dense brownies and nobody wants that. You want a nice, soft, fudgy brownie. Stir this until it kind of comes together. And then these are like ridiculously rich and outrageously chocolatey brownies because I am team chocolate, just to annoy my husband over there. Um, so to this, we're gonna add- I never heard you say you're team anything. We're gonna add so, chocolate chips. Not annoying, I'm more surprised. <laughs> um, I have right here a prepared baking dish. Now my little trick is to add foil so that it hangs over two of the sides and then you grease it but this is gonna make um, lifting the brownies out at the end very easy. All right, so here we go, pour it in here. It's okay if you see some flour like that, because again, 
you don't want to over mix the flour. Should you have preheated the oven or anything at this point? Yep, you preheated the oven to 350. Um, and these are gonna bake for about 22 to 25 minutes. Oh, thank you. Jack, do the dishes. <laughs> okay, now- Am I even gonna try it? While these are in the oven, um, I'm gonna need cameraman over here because I'm going to make the next layer of these brownies. This is my mint layer. So in my mixer, I have a cup and a half of powdered sugar. And to it, I'm gonna add some melted butter, three tablespoons, and a tablespoon and a half of whole milk, and a half teaspoon of peppermint extract. That goes in there. And then you're just gonna mix it up. When we were kids, we put green food coloring in here, which you can totally do. Some people don't really like the, the you know, artificial dyes, so I've left it out. Um, but it makes it kind of pretty and festive if you, if you do wanna do that. What speed are you on? I'm on, I start slow so that the powdered sugar doesn't go flying everywhere, but then I like to kind of push it up to high so it gets really nice and smooth. So there you have it. It's like a little peppermint icing. It's really yummy. So after the brownies have baked and cooled, very important that you let them cool, we're gonna spread this all over the brownies. And I have a slop. Here they are, fully chilled. So after I spread the mint layer, I put it in the fridge and chilled it for about an hour. That's gonna make pouring the glaze on much easier. So to the glaze, last layer. I have about six ounces of bittersweet chocolate chips. I'm gonna add a fourth cup of heavy cream, and this is gonna make a ganache of sorts. Again, really rich brownies fat-free. So I'm going to microwave this for 30 second intervals. It's really important you just do 30 second intervals because otherwise you're going to burn the chocolate. And usually it takes me like two 30 second intervals, maybe three, until it's nice and smooth. All right, so our ganache is done and we are going to spread it over our chilled brownies. And you can just use a spatula to make sure it kind of evenly gets over everything. And then finally, because this wouldn't be rich enough as is, I like to add chocolate mints to the top, such as like Andy's mints or whatever. You could use um, candy, um, candy, candy canes. Candy canes, you could use Girl Scout cookies, like those thin mints, that would be really yummy. Just any kind of like chocolate mint topping to give it a little crunch. So there's your top layer. And right here, I've got some mints. And you just need to give it kind of like a rough chop. It doesn't have to look perfect. All right. So we'll sprinkle this on the top. And then. There's more? By the magic of TV and editing, here is, we're going to chill that so that it's easier to cut and to remove from your pan. Watch this. Ta-da! Those are our brownies. And I like to cut them into 16 squares. You could cut them however big or small you like. Throw that in the fridge for chilling. Yeah. How's this piece for you? Is this, is this big enough? There you go, now you can see all three layers. Obviously, I'm gonna cut this into four pieces, but just so you have an idea. All right. Pretty good. Now we need some drinks. In the Daily Household, it was all about the Brandy Alexander. That's my mom's handwriting, that's the recipe right there. This is a staple classic on Christmas morning. I think my parents were hungover from being Santa's helpers on Christmas Eve, perhaps, and so these were always made very early in the morning, which my sister and I could Always were like, wow, okay, it's early for Brandy Alexander's, but folks were doing it, so. It became a tradition for us, and, um, and we then it morphed to doing them pretty much at any special occasion, graduations, birthdays, Thanksgiving, you name it. So the Brandy Alexander's a huge part of the family tradition. We even named our, our dog uh, Lexi after B. Alexander because we had a white little fluffy Shia Poo, Shih Tzu Poodle, 
and um, it had a little dark here in the nose area, and that's when we sprinkled this white frothy drink with nutmeg. Mm -hmm. It looked like our household pet. So yeah. Lexi, wherever you are in heaven, God rest your soul. So this is very easy. Uh, the recipe is just a, a matter of ratios. So we've got lots of ice in the blender, and this uh, old school Italian wine is exactly one cup. My mom always used these, so we're gonna use that. And we're just gonna put in some brandy, whatever kind of brandy you like. And we'll do one and a half cups. In fact, I'll double this recipe. Uh, so we'll just do two one and a half cups or three cups of brandy. There's one. Two. My first uh, Christmas season with the Daly family, I uh, definitely had one too many of those because they three. taste like ice cream. So there's three cups of brandy, then it's cream to cocoa, one, one cup, but we're gonna double it. So two cups of cream to cocoa. One. There's two. And then the other one is the half and half, and it's also just one part. So we'll do two cups of half and half. One, two. And then um, we used to make virgin um, versions of these for the kids, uh, and we'd use vanilla ice cream instead. And then as we became adults, we decided that it just tasted better. So we've married the uh, idea of putting ice cream also into the adult version. Tastes like a adult beverage. So we'll shake. just drop in as much vanilla ice cream as you want. We use Haagen Dazs, like just good quality ice cream. And then that's it. We blend it up. And you can work on the consistency. All right, there you go. One, just dab a little nutmeg on top. One. These are really good, like delicious. It's a good tradition. So there you have it. You can get shot of that Jackie. A little nutmeg on top. Brandy Alexander, daily tradition, uh, and the delicious. Dark chocolate mint brownies. Brown <laughs> done by my wife. They're worth it. So, happy holidays to all of you today, all day. Thanks for having us and have a great one. We'll see you really soon. Cheers. Cheers. Yum. Cheers indeed. <laughs> Coming up, it's almost time for me to give you a little taste of my own holiday memories. And later, Savannah Guthrie shares how she honors her late father around the holidays. Welcome back to Holidays in My House. And now we are really going to be in my house. Here are a few of my favorite holiday memories. To me, holidays are all about tradition. I like to recreate everything that I loved about my childhood and everything my husband did with his family. And we try to just kind of combine all that together and make things special for our kids. The holidays for me has so much to do with food. But first and foremost, it's creating the menu that brings back all those feelings, you know, from when we were little, whether it's the sweets or the salty or the main meal, you know, I just, I love to plan the menu so it's all nostalgic and it's everything we used to have when we were little. I very rarely add something new. Nobody wants me to change things up, you know? There's the magic that you get to see through your kids' eyes. You know, you, you hit this point, you know, when you're too old to celebrate Christmas the way you did as a kid and you don't have kids yet, and now it's all coming back. It's making the cookies for Santa. It's writing the letters. It's leaving out the carrots for the reindeer. It's all that stuff that you get to do again with your kids in mind and seeing the magic through their eyes. I just, I absolutely love it. This one was one of our first Christmas trees. There's, there's two traditions that I think of when I think of Christmas. And number one was decorating the Christmas tree. My mom always sat uh, on her knees next to the big box of ornaments and she'd hand them out to us one by one, me and my brothers. And sometimes she'd tell a little story or we'd ask a question about that ornament and then we'd hang it on the tree and then we'd go back for the next one, you know? And it was this long process with like boxes and boxes of ornaments. And I noticed, not on purpose, but I naturally started doing that Baby's first Christmas, 1981. This was my first 
Christmas ornament? Mostly Calvin because Oliver still has the potential to drop and break <laughs> the good ornaments and Rusty forget about them. But as I hand these ornaments to Calvin, I naturally start telling him the story. It's like, oh, this is the one when it was your first Christmas, or this is the one when mommy and daddy got engaged. And the ornaments that you collect over the years have so much history and so much meaning. So I remember doing that with my mom, and it just happened so organically uh, with my kids, and I, I love doing that with them. And the other tradition, which started when I was a baby, was sitting on the stairs waiting for my parents to come down first. We were not allowed to go anywhere near the Christmas tree to see if Santa came until we sat on the stairs and my parents came down first. But my dad would make this a whole big long affair. He had to go to the kitchen, he had to make coffee first, then he had to go get the old camera that had film and he, you know, the click, 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 and he's recording us on the stairs. And even when my brothers and I would come home from college or my brothers were in the military, as grown adults, we were sitting on the stairs waiting until my dad came down first and then we could go see the Christmas tree. So I started that with my boys. Ollie wanted nothing to do with it. He had no idea why I was making him sit on the stairs until I, I remember he was just in tears. Um, but I'm like, no, you have to sit there because I need this picture of you guys sitting on the stairs because that's what I have. Um, and so my oldest is, is starting to get it. You know, he kind of follows the rules a little bit better. But I just, I love that anticipation. You're already losing sleep the night before on Christmas Eve, but then Christmas morning, I just want that anticipation to last a little bit longer. Last year, Ollie was born a couple months before Christmas, so it was kind of chaotic. I was on maternity leave. I was still trying to cook and still trying to make everything as, as normal for the other boys as I could, you know, but we never got a chance to bake cookies. We never got a chance to really soak it all in. So this year, you know, Rusty's over a year now, so I, I really can't wait to just have our set tradition. I feel like this is the year, whatever we do this year is what we're going to do every year from here on out. You know, there's no more changes, there's no more getting used to new people in the house. You know, like we, we've got our family of five now, and I think this year it's, it's all about starting our tradition as a family of five, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that. It's yummy! It's so delicious, and it's not a Christmas dinner without it. The Today Show always asks us to cook our favorite family recipe, you know, and Al's got his sweet potato poon, and I've got my jello mold, and it's really my favorite, favorite thing. It's delicious. It's lime jello, it's marshmallow fluff, it's pineapples. I mean, it's everything my mom would throw into this jello mold. Wait, this is not a dessert? It's not a dessert. It's actually. It actually goes well with savory things. Al is absolutely disgusted by it, but he also doesn't like Jello. And Dead Jello mold is my family's ultimate tradition. And I can't even get him to take a bite of it. I'm like, please, just give it a chance. It's so good. Um, you know, and it also breaks my heart. It's like these are these delicious family recipes. Like, try the recipe, Al. Come on. Because I have three young kids, there's there's so many things that can go wrong with your schedule you know you can have a plan but you have to bend that plan you know when things go awry and I've learned that a lot like this year I really wanted to go apple picking I really wanted to go pumpkin picking we didn't get to do any of that and my kids didn't notice you know um, we never carved pumpkins which is a tradition I always did as a kid and then at the last minute I found these little pumpkins and you know some glitter and some you know pipe cleaners and they sat there and with a huge smile on their face they just decorated the pumpkins and it's like okay this is different from what I did but they're having a good time you know and I, I think it's it's not so much about maintaining the traditions I'm so used to but it's about letting ours kind of develop and I think I've learned that over the course of the last couple holidays and I, I really just I want to let go a little bit this holiday season and just let things happen as the kids want them to happen and they'll make their own traditions. It's so easy to get stressed out around the holidays. I certainly feel that anxiety, you know, having to shop for everybody and shop for extended family and nieces and nephews and I mean everybody. It's it's so overwhelming, but I think I don't know. I don't care if I receive gifts or not. I just really want to be with my family and I think everybody sort of has that same mentality. Kids certainly want a, a pile of presents, you know, but I, I think it really just comes down to family and company and some food on the table and just the conversation. I think there, there's something just so magical about this time of year and I just like to soak it up with my family.
Now it's time to pass the baton to my good pal and fellow weather nerd, Al Roker. Here's everything you ever wanted to know about the Roker family Christmas. My favorite family tradition is not everybody fighting. That's a, that's a, that's a great thing. If that happens, you can get your, your adult children together and, every, and their, their significant others and everything's fine. Win-win. The holiday season is, is the time where everybody gets together. You're just looking forward to getting together with family and friends that you might not have seen during the year, especially, you know, in this one concentrated time that you get your kids together, you get your friends together, and they're all, everybody's hanging out. I just remember our parents doing, uh, you know, we come from a lower middle class background, but, you know, we every year got what we wanted for Christmas and it was always this this warmth it, it was just you know my dad decorating the tree and doing these stencils on the windows and my mom baking and uh, yeah it was you know the, the house always felt warm my kids look it's different now they're all older uh, uh, you know, holiday shopping becomes much simpler. You know, they're not looking for the hot toy or anything like that. Uh, getting up, especially uh, Christmas morning, getting up uh, all together, and we still open the presents. The difference is now, thankfully, we're not getting up at 6 a.m. in the morning because the little ones are up and, oh, so let's see what Santa did. Now it's, uh, oh, we get up around 9 o'clock, and that's just great. Good morning. Merry Christmas our favorite tradition that we're actually going to miss this year because when uh, Christmas falls on a uh, weekday, we tape the show and there are two punch bowls of eggnog, one with and one without, and Christmas cookies. Do you like the eggnog? What's the, yes, what's the secret to good eggnog? The proportions, yes. Yeah, like to, to, from bourbon, bourbon, bourbon. To, bourbon to the actual knot. And by the end of the taping, the with bowl is a lot lower than the without bowl, and that's what makes the Christmas taping that much more fun. Yeah, I think we pretty much have the same side dishes and the same turkey that everybody else does. My mother made a uh, crustless sweet potato pie called sweet potato poon. Yeah. And then you put it's it so in good. the oven under the broiler yeah. for okay. about... Two minutes till it gets nice and golden brown. Mm, Take that's it pretty. Out. With a toasted marshmallow topping, and that's uh, that's a, a, a must uh, at our table every year. All right, guys, go chop down a Christmas tree. We shall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we will once again go out. Uh, the one thing uh, in the last couple of years that has changed is uh, I, I there's no shame in this game. I, I I've got a small electric chainsaw. Timber! So it uh, cuts through those trees like butter. And its thing is, you know, we pick it up. It takes us longer to pick it out than to cut it down and then drag it back to, to get the netting on it. But in the meantime, and the, also the fun thing, they got that shaky thing. That you put, the, you put the, the tree in and it shakes off all the uh, uh, detritus and if there are any small squirrels in there or anything like that. Rockefeller Center and the tree is almost in a way to my thinking, the, the center of the Christmas universe. And it's the most famous tree in the world. Uh, and and people flock to see it. We here at 30 Rock kind of take take it for granted. You know, we walk past it, uh, you know, every day coming into work. But, you know, there are people who travel from around the world to see that tree. And the idea that there it is and you look down and the folks are skating and it is the quintessential Christmas scene. You show that, and that, that epitomizes Christmas for everybody. So New York City, I think, is the epicenter of Christmas. You know, I think we've tried to always be grateful year-round uh, for what we have. But I think in the last few years, I think we're even more uh, purposeful about it, given that we've learned how quickly things can change on a dime, uh, so that maybe you don't wait till the holidays to express that gratitude to those you love and you care about. I think the best gift, and it sounds kind of schmaltzy, but is, is, is all of my children together, you know, because it, that's very hard during the year. That's around, that's like, you know, herding cats. And uh, to have your kids together uh, for a, a, a 
concentrated period of time uh, is about as good as it gets. Uh, and, and to realize that they're everything you wanted them to be. Thanks, Al, for sharing what makes this season so special for you and your loved ones. We'll be back with more holiday hijinks right after this. Welcome back to Holidays in My House. So what are the holidays without music? Coming up, my fellow third hour of today co-anchor Chanel Jones explains how music and dance always take the lead in her family's festivities. But first, Jenna shares how the Bush family Christmas traditions are passed on to the next generation. Take a look. Christmases in Texas growing up were really fun. Was, we were always with my, my mom's parents, Jenna and Harold Welch, and um, we were in West Texas, which gets pretty warm into the desert. So there wasn't much snow, although it did snow one year and we couldn't believe it. And then the main tradition that we have over Christmas is Mexican food on Christmas Eve, Tex-Mex. So it's tamales and enchiladas, guacamole. And in fact, the first year that my husband spent Christmas with my family, he like he was like, wait, where's the ham? He couldn't believe that that was the way we celebrated, but it's just such a beautiful tradition. Um, and one that we, we love to celebrate. And in fact, me, Len, Poppy are all in. The holiday season is all about family, being together. It's like to watch the magic in their eyes. The one tradition that we all had um, is that my grandmother, um, Barbara, needle pointed all of our stockings. I have a needle pointed stocking from her somewhere. I don't know where it is. And then my kids got one. So here is Mila's. She was the first one, um, and you'll notice the cat on top. That was a special request from Mila, who is a particular cat lady. And then um, she needle-pointed poppies, which you'll see has a poppy flower on it. And then I couldn't even believe it, but um, at the first Christmas house, first Christmas, right before Christmas came a stocking that she had needle-pointed before she died. Um, she stockpiled a lot for her great-grandchildren. So I just imagine her wildly needle pointing. And so even though she, Hal was born after she passed away, she, he is always gonna have a part of her. So these talkings are something that we talk about every year. They're among our most treasured um, possessions. And now I need to learn how to needle point because I have to put Hal on here. So that's, so that, that will continue, or I'll have to find somebody that can't needle point. That might be more practical. Growing up, the holidays were probably like a lot of people, just the best of times. Leading up to the holiday, I remember spending time with my grandmother and my grandfather at their house. Just that much? Yeah, I gotta add a little bit more. That'd be enough for you. That much. For your family. She was always playing holiday music and it was always soulful music. Mahalia Jackson, Nat King Cole. My husband is Nigerian um, and my husband's father is a minister. So he would usually lead a service. So if anything, our tradition has been, we put on native wear and we have a church service at home or we'll go to a church service. I think it is important to my husband um, that my kids are brought up knowing, uh, you know, his side and his culture. So I actually am happy that every year, um, and even more than every year, whenever we get together, um, you know, they get new native wear because as they continue to grow, they continue to get new outfits. And again, they love the fact that they can match with their cousins. And so we have a lot of pictures over the years of, of wearing native wear, you know, during the holidays. And I look forward to it. And I think they look forward to it too. For me, holidays are a time to push the pause button and be grateful for the friends and family around you and to have gratitude in your circumstance. And while things may not be perfect, we're here. I think gratitude is certainly uh, the theme of the season. All right, so my family tradition is to have dance parties. Mm -hmm. And I honestly will tell you, I know you guys know I like to dance or whatever, but if you're sitting at home mm -hmm. and you're thinking about what can I do with my family, I'm telling you, if you come home and say, hey, kids, let's make up a family routine. My kids did this in a bodega. <laughs> like, <laughs> we hear music and we just break out into dance. And I was like, you know what? My kids are happy. And it's what's most important to me. You know, there may be a pile of laundry in the corner, but I'm so happy that I wasn't so worried about the laundry that I didn't miss the moment in front of me. And it's just fun. And then it was so cute to see the little moves. I don't even remember when I started turning on music and as I would dance, they would dance. But I got the biggest kick out of 
having these little people who are of you who like the things that you like. <laughs> it's just almost like, oh, this is so cool. Wait, you like this too? Because I like this too. We've had routines and I always look at the background and it's always a mess. I'm like, what was I doing? And then other times I'm like, you know what? It may have been a mess in the background, but look how happy they are. <laughs> you know, that's what I try to tell myself. Um, but they're getting older now, you know, and I used to be able to turn on the music and we would just dance. We'd make up routines. Now my daughter will make up routines with me, but I just, I wonder now if my dance parties are going to be a thing of the past. We'll see. I think instead of trying to make everything perfect, I think it's important to be in the moment and to look around at the relatives around you. I have a lot of older relatives in my family. And when I close my eyes and think of my fondest memories of Christmas, you know, none of those relatives are here with us, you know, and there's enough technology, there's enough of everything else. But interaction, if you can just, you know, take some time to have quality time together and look at each other in the eye and have conversations and have a meal and, you know, those kinds of things. I think those are the things uh, that are most important. Man, that was so cool. I wonder if I could see if my boys could do some of those dance moves with me this Christmas. All right, coming up, Kristen Welker shares how baby Margot has changed her holidays for the better. Plus, Peter Alexander details how his family weaves together two beautiful holiday traditions. Welcome back to Holidays in My House on Today All Day. It's time to hear from our friends over at Weekend Today, Kristen Welker and Peter Alexander, about how they mark the holiday season with their growing families. Are you excited about this Christmas? Every family has their own traditions. My wife grew up <laughs> celebrating Christmas. I grew up celebrating Hanukkah. Together for our girls, we're kind of blending the two. What does it say? It says... Okay. Dear Santa, I hope you have a great Christmas slash Hanukkah. For me, Hanukkah, like all the Jewish holidays, was really about family. I remember sitting around the Hanukkah menorah as a kid and watching my mom and dad light the candles and all of us saying the blessing together. Baruch Adonai. So those are the moments that I really cherish. One of my favorite traditions from growing up was I would leave a plate of cookies for Santa. Margo, we're going to make some cookies. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Daddy, what Got do we do? Got a little butter in there. Now we add an egg. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not the best cook, but I really wanted to bake Christmas cookies this year. Yum, yum, Just yum. Just got to make sure it all mixes up there. We have to mix it and then we have to taste it, Margo. Yeah. That's part of the tradition. But one of our favorite new traditions we've started is wrapping yeah. gifts. It's books for one of the health clinics in our community. Ready? Ready? Now put it there. Nice work. I want to do this one. Can I please? Yeah, let me just trim this. The hope is that our girls learn that the traditions, Hanukkah and Christmas, aren't just about us and about our families, but about sharing and giving to other families, too. I've bought matching family Christmas pajamas. John's not totally on board yet with the matching pajamas, but I know that when he puts them on, he's going to love them. <laughs> Look at what we got! Christmas pajamas! Ooh, super cute and festive! Except for mommy and daddy! Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> the best part of celebrating yeah. the holidays as a dad now is just seeing the excitement in my girl's eyes. What do you want to name him? What are you going to name this guy? Bruce! Mr. Bruce the Snowman! <laughs> Margo is fascinated by the Christmas tree. <gasps> is that a branch? Is that a tree branch? Yeah. I can watch her eyes wide with wonder as she sees this new vision in front of her. Now we get to actually share all of these amazing traditions with her. Man, don't babies just make everything sweeter? Speaking of some sweet kiddos coming up, Savannah Guthrie shares the family holiday traditions she continues with her kids. Welcome back. We end with Savannah Guthrie as she shares the impact her late father had on her family's Christmas traditions. My dad loved Christmas. It was his birthday, but he had a lot of Christmas traditions in his family, and it was really important to him to make Christmas special for us. On Christmas Eve, my father would always gather us around and we would read the Christmas story in the Bible, and we always really loved that because I think it connected us to the holiday in a really 
spiritual and significant way. And even as kids, I think we loved that moment of just being at my father's knee and feeling that there was really something special, something eternally special about this day. And the other tradition we had was a lot more commercial. My dad would always pretend like there was no way we could open any of our Christmas gifts early, but always, always on Christmas Eve, he would relent and say, okay, just one. And so we would always get to pick one Christmas present to open on Christmas Eve. He was really funny. He would say, after all, all day, we'd say, Daddy, please, please, can we open a present tonight? Please, please. And he'd say, no, no, you can't open any presents before Christmas. He'd always then on Christmas Eve say, okay, just one. And we would open up the present and then he'd say, let's open them all. And then we'd say, no, Dad, no, we have to wait till Christmas. So that was always just a kind of, that was just a really sweet tradition that we had with my dad. In my family, Christmas was what we waited for all year long. That was the time when you got a present. We were not one of those families where every time you went to the store, you got a little something. I can remember a million times asking my mom or dad for something I saw at the store or something I saw on TV. My mom or dad would say, wait till Christmas. So everything built up all year long for Christmas. It, it's just always been really magical. I think the fact that I lost my dad when I was 16 and um, I just, I think, it makes Christmas even more special to us because it was his holiday. And that's how we felt and that's how he felt. And so I think we hold on to Christmas even harder now because it's a tie to him. It's a tie to the past and it's a tie to our memories. And so Christmas just absolutely lives in my heart and lives in our family. And I will spend every, every minute I have making sure that my kids feel that magic too. So when we decorate the tree, I always put the music on and let them have hot chocolate and try to make it a real moment. I can still remember opening up those old ornament boxes that had been tucked away for a year in the closet and looking at the ornaments and remembering them and saying, this is the one I wanna hang up, this is my favorite one. So I try to do that with my kids. I try to draw out that whole process of hanging ornaments on the tree and really make it a special, special moment. But I also am sure to talk to my kids about their faith and that this is a special night because this is the night we remember when Christ came to save the world. And in our family, that is a, um, a living part of what we believe. And I always wanna tie them back to that. I want them to have their fun. They will always have fun at Christmas, but I also want them to feel that magic of what their faith means to them, why the night feels so special to go out, look up at the stars and imagine that star long, long ago. I think that just adds to the majesty of Christmas and makes it enduring. You know, you could get tired of presents, maybe. You could get tired of the old songs, but when it lives in your heart and your faith is, is deeply within you and you tie Christmas to your faith and God with us, which is to me what Christmas is all about then I think um, that's something that my kids will hold inside them for as long as they live. I know I do. I know my parents gave that to me and it's one of the most important traditions I hope to pass on. I am determined to make it joyous for my kids and for my mom and for my sister and brother and my nieces and nephews. I just really wanna make sure I do everything in my power to make everyone feel joyful and light and hopeful for the new year because that's Christmas to me. And there you have it, joy, light, and hope. What more could you ask for this year? Well, from baked goodies to boozy surprises, family dance-offs to holiday memories that will last a lifetime, from our family to yours, we want to wish you a heartfelt happy holidays. I'm Dylan Dreyer. We'll see you next time on Today All Day. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.